tonight. I'm Jimmy Parker, I'm Professor Shabby, and the Social Concept for Politics at the Home of our Christopher Hope, a little bit from now until midnight. Very uh, happy new year to both of you. We'll chat in a minute. We'll have a look at our pages about first of all, though, starting with the Times. Millions will shun trains forever, reads their front uh, page, and says their generation of passengers will be put off train travel due to recent strikes. <laughs> While the Iron reports that the NHS faces three months of turmoil and its long waits and shortages, the mirror leads with the same stories that my future band chatted on the knife edge. The FT leads off economists predicting this UK recession will be the deepest and longest yet. While the Daily Mail looks at comments made by Prince Harry about the royal family, its headline, Harry, I'd like my father and brother back. And the Daily Telegraph has this same headline with it reports that the Duke of Sussex has claimed the King and Prince of Wales are unwilling to reconcile with him. As you can see, the Boston Sun has that is not back. And Pine Dining is the front of the Daily Star. Uh, don't forget, by scanning the QR code, you can see the stream of the first time you check out our pages. Of tomorrow's papers while you watch us discussing them and join us by our journalist and author Rachel Shabby and social editor for politics for today's Telegraph, Christopher Hope. Great to see you both as uh, well, we're all preparing to go back to work, um, kids preparing to go back to school after the festivities are over, and boy, doesn't it feel like the decorations have come down, <laughs> the fun has ended, and uh, the, the, the misery continues really, especially when it comes to the NHS. Rachel, front page of the eye, NHS faces three months of turmoil. Uh, so I'm predicting it's going to be much more than that. Absolutely, and we've had some really grim stories about the NHS over the last few days, um, with with reports that some between 300 to 500 people are dying um, due to lack of access to accident and emergency, which, like other parts of the NHS and social care, is completely broken, and it's. You know, we, we all rely on the NHS and most of us have people in our lives who are elderly and vulnerable and the thought of them not being able to get the care that they might need should anything, heaven forbid, happen to them is, is absolutely terrifying and that is exactly the situation that so many people up and down this country are facing. We're hearing all kinds of grim reports from um, doctors and nurses and frontline workers, ambulance workers, um, about the, the desperation of having people wait in ambulances for you know 12 to eight hours, 18 hours because a and e is backed up or you know lying in their own urine because they're waiting uh, for beds to free up uh, at a and e and outside of a and e there is a critical shortage of staff of beds of funding uh, and of social care and it is absolutely crippling uh, the NHS system, which, which we all believe in and we all want to support, but the government does not seem to be prepared to give it the funding and the investment that it needs right now. Yeah, I'm mean, looking for the government guarantee uh, staging two walkouts. Um, and millions will shun trains forever, according to the Times. I and mean, we have got used to not taking trains, haven't we, during the pandemic? And it is that a habit that's going to stay? I'm really not sure about that. Look, I think this is just part of a broad attempt we've seen over the last few months in many of the newspapers, and including the Times, to basically blame um, the rail workers and the rail unions for these strikes. The trouble is that overwhelmingly we have public support for most public sector workers, and it is uh, holding up for the rail workers as well. And we've just heard from the RMT that actually, you know, they say the government is holding up uh, the potential for negotiations there and the capacity to reach a deal. It's interesting that in the polling so far, it does show uh, public sympathies are very much in line with that, i.e. they overwhelmingly blame uh, the government plus uh, the rail companies rather than the unions all the strikes, and I think we're going to see this as a problem going forward with all the public sector strikes. Uh, the problem being that the public sympathy is very much with public sector workers, particularly coming out of the pandemic, where we, you know, have this intense feeling of gratitude forged for such workers, from health workers to postal workers, 
but also we're all in this same cost of living crisis. So really, when the government and the papers are attacking uh, strikers, striking workers, they're actually attacking all of us. Of course, how long do you think Robertson's the, the, the 